Hey everybody, welcome back to Breakfast with Bob from Challenge Miami. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by Challenge North America, City Bikes Venito, the Challenge Athletes Foundation, Florida Dairy Farmers, and Wahoo, gentlemen who took fifth here at Challenge Daytona uh, back in December, walking away with a, a cool $30,000, Mr. Rudy Von Berg. That's not a bad uh, day's work for a couple hours. Hi, Bob. Uh, yeah, no, that was... Uh Awesome prize money for sure. I uh, love biggest that. prize purse in uh, triathlon history. So. What, there was, how's that compare with what you get? Uh, third at um, at Nice. The third out uh, seventy point three worlds was uh, fifteen thousand. Wow! So half less for a podium. There you worlds. go. Well, good. So you, you you've been on. What I like about uh, when I look at you, you like big races with the biggest names. And you like challenging courses. You know, you look at what you did at, at, at uh, 70.3 Worlds at Nice. That's a technical bike course with up and down. You got to know what the hell you're doing. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about this is, course is totally different than Daytona, correct? Uh, yes, yes, quite different. I definitely like the big races with uh, just the best athletes because my goal just throughout my career is to win the biggest races, obviously. So right. you just always kind of want to look for those races with the best athletes right. so that's why i'm pretty happy uh jan was able to get over and lionel and guys like that so uh yeah as for the course uh daytona was not very windy and just you know right around the oval so you were just pushing the same power the entire way pretty much yes here it's actually quite different so we go inside in those uh, pit roads and it's very windy today it will be the same tomorrow and it just you know changes the rhythm especially the high winds too the water will be quite different with the tailwind and the right. headwind. So, yeah, just uh, I think that's to my advantage. I think the corners themselves won't change that much because, you know, it's 17 loops. You'd think the guys that can't corner that well after a few loops will figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> or they'll be off <laughs> the back. Or just follow the lines, you know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, overall, I think it's uh, just a slightly better course for me. Uh, when you look about Collins Cup, uh, I was talking to Charles Adamo yesterday, and he said, hey, nothing's firmed up yet. But our number one matchup could be Rudy Von Berg, Jan Frodeno, and Lionel Sanders. <laughs> you know, Lionel Sanders representing the internationals, Jan Frodeno representing Europe, and Rudy representing the U.S. That would be in August, and that would be pretty darn cool. That would be pretty epic for me, being with those two guys, two of the biggest names, yeah. pretty much the two biggest names yeah. in triathlon. Yes. Uh, yeah, that would be huge motivation for me. Charles told me uh, yesterday, yeah, that it, it might be... Uh, that might what, be. what they're looking at so uh it, it's not for sure but yeah if everything goes well and uh, the event takes place and that would be just uh, pretty epic for me so your dad has been into the sport forever it was it one of those things growing up where i mean you could go one or two ways one is that's dad's sport i want nothing to do with it <laughs> i'm tired of going around getting up at four in the morning and schlepping out to these races or i like this i think i you know i want to do it or did it start out I'm not into this. Uh, how did it work? Was it something you were into right away? Uh, pretty much. I was always into it. He put, put us in a lot of uh, club sports. Yes. So I played you know, tennis, soccer, the three triathlon sports. We'd go skiing every year, too. Right. So, um, yeah, it, it wasn't... At no point I, th I thought that I didn't want to do it. I always like to do things kind of on my own, so mm -hmm. traveling was also perfect for that. Right. And yeah, I pretty much never stopped, started as soon as I could. I think my tri first triathlon was when I was uh, 10, 2003. Yeah. And then, yeah, pr pretty much done 10 of them every single year. <laughs> 10 triathlons every year, so you've stayed pretty healthy. Uh, yeah, I had a few injuries, a few stress fractures, but... But right. I was always kind of smart about it. I mean, I wasn't the type to just, you know, run through the pain for weeks and then make a huge injury. Right. I did that once on the, this stress fracture I had because it was just three weeks before under 23 uh, ITU right. worlds and it became a grade four stress fracture. But apart from that, yeah, pretty fortunate. When I look at the, the races that you've done well at and you won the Euro champs, what, 2018 in, in front of your folks, that had and, to be pretty. And 19, both years. Both years in front of your folks. Pretty fun, huh? Yeah, that was, uh, that was kind of my, my A race at the, at the time yeah. with 70.3 Worlds. But, so I had two peaks during the year. Right. 
and uh, both 2018 and 2019 were pretty thrilling races. My parents were there, I had full motivation, I was in good shape, and both turned out to be a, just a really tight battle. Yes. One with Adam Bowden, one with Javier Gomez, and both I finished within, well, 11 seconds to Javier <laughs> in 2019, and maybe 30, 40 to Adam Bowden in 2018. So, yeah, pretty, pretty cool races. Yeah, and then with Challenge Daytona, uh, it, it played out a lot like an ITU race because you were, you know, in fifth place, and you know, you're basically two o. What you're just like two o. You're what a minute, minute thirty five or something down to uh, from the, the win from the win, back yeah. in fifth place. I mean, so it was so it was pretty tight. I think first to ninth was about maybe two and a half minutes or something. It was very tight. I mean, a lot of people don't know I raced ITU for quite a bit, for a few years. Uh, right. In juniors and under 23. I did probably five, six years of ITU. Okay. And then I started going to 70.3. But yeah, I mean, so I'm used to those tight gaps and I know every second counts. And yeah, I just gave it my all. And uh, I think it won't be quite as tight here, but I'm hoping I can be in the battle with uh, Jan and Lionel and yes. that we can have a, a good battle for TV. Uh, you want to have a good battle for TV, but this this course, from because it's thirty what thirty seven miles or something, uh, it, it could play out like an ITU race because you really do have to handle a bike. Um, you have to obviously try to maintain power into and out of those curves, and then you still got to get off and run <laughs> pretty damn fast. Yeah, it's it is really the race will probably take about two and a half hours. Maybe. Yes. So it's definitely, it's close to an Olympic, actually. Closer yes. to an Olympic than a 70.3. Right. And with still the quite strong field we have here. Uh, and the bike, I think there won't be huge gaps off the bike either. It won't be like Nice, you know, where it's actual mountains. Right. So I think it will be, yeah, just pretty tight racing and it will be down to the wire. Well, it's, what'll be interesting is I, th I think it could, it could slow it down a little bit around, uh, you know, it'd be, it's hard for people to get away when they have to slow down for these turns. So it, it right. could be packed up. You could have a big pack off the bike first. Yeah, and I'm hoping for me that if I can corner a little better than some of these guys, I can kind of attack on some straights right. and then keep my gap or extend it on those corners. So it, we'll see how it goes. Is it one of those things where you want to have, uh, you, you'll use the energy to try to get that gap or do you, you, know, do you not waste that energy because you'll need it for the run? Uh, I mean, I usually always try to use my back to a degree. Yes. My, my bike, not yes. my back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My bike to a degree. So I'm not just going to sit, you know, and wait for the run. I right. pretty much never do that. Uh, I always try somehow to hurt the legs of the runners. So we'll see if it will be a full-blown attack and be off the front or right. if it will just be softening, softening the, their run, run legs for the run. So, so you... For Nice, how much time did you spend there training for that race, for 70.3 Worlds? Uh, well, so since I go back home for other European races, yeah. I was able to ride the course maybe pretty much like 90% of the course, maybe around 10 to 12 times. Okay. Um, because, yeah, for, for other races when I was in the, in the area, for my long rides, I would right. always do the course. So, it, yeah. it, do you think that helped on race day? Definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think I still would have been faster on the downhills. And also, I mean, after the uphill, I was already second of the race. Right. People only remember the downhill, you know, but I was already up there. <laughs> right, yeah, no, it's not like you were behind. Right, right. You were, and, you were um, yeah, what was your question? Uh, yeah. So, the advantage you got from knowing that course, because that's one of those courses, I think everybody was thinking about, oh, my God, the climb, the climb, the climb, and people weren't really talking that much about the advantage somebody has who can, who can descend. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, that was, I knew that was going to happen. I knew a lot of triathletes aren't very good in descenders, aren't right. very, you know, a lot of them can push power, you know, they do their Zwift races and, they're, and they can push these big watts that I don't even know how they do it. Yeah. <laughs> but then there's, you know, riding, even on a course like this, you're going to have to manage your power with the wind and the corners. Yes. You know, it's just not mashing the pedals. So, yeah, I think there's a... Uh, this technical aspect that can play into my hands. With ITU racing, it was, did you get to a point where you just felt like, okay, I've pretty much come as far as I can go? Uh, not really. It's just with me being going to Kona with my dad when I was young, 
the long course world, Ironman and Hawaii was More always appealing. the shining star for me. Yes. So that's just the route I wanted to go. I always liked biking more. Uh, yes. More just these endurance, longer rides. And in ITU, it was really hard to put my bike to use. Yes. And I was also slightly weaker swimmer, so it was frustrating not being up there. I worked on it quite a bit, so now I can, I f I'm hoping at least tomorrow I'll be up there with the best swimmers. You just yeah. were doing a training block on the Big Island. Mm -hmm. Are you, was that specifically for this race or for a uh, Kona shot? Some, somebody, are you thinking about trying to go to do a qualifier for Kona? Uh, it was both. So it was same uh, weather conditions in here. It was humid and hot. And wind. But yeah. also I just wanted to do a camp in Kona yeah, for thinking about qualifying for Kona this year. Are you? So, well, I'm, I'm trying. Uh, you got to find a race, obviously. Right. I was going to do Ironman France in June right. to qualify, but that got postponed to September. So I have to find another race. We'll see. Uh, around those days, there's Frankfurt and Switzerland. Right. And uh, Lake Placid, I think, also, end yes. of July. Yeah. So those might be the three options. We'll see if they happen. But if I can, um, re well, we'll both try. Uh, my dad and me should be in Kona together. So hopefully. that's what you're wanting. This year, the idea is for you and your dad to be in Kona together. That's the We're idea. both racing. It's been uh, an idea we've had for a long time. I mean, essentially since I've started uh, my pro career. Very cool. And we planned it for this year. Obviously, COVID is changing that a bit, right. but we're still both going for it. And Very cool. hopefully we can be there. Love it. Hey, Rude, always a pleasure to chat with you. You're Thank always you. fun. Thank you for what, having what me. Do you, what do you think for tomorrow? What, what, are your, what would you be happy with? I'd be uh, really stoked for the win, but um, I'd be happier with the podium overall. Hey, and you're part of a new Vespa triathlon team. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's super cool. Always really nice to be with these non-endemic sponsors and uh, Vespa scooters. I mean, they're perfect for training, really. You can do motor pacing uh, to go to the pool or to the trailhead. It's really just the most convenient solution. And we're not yeah. trying to be in our cars all day long. So a scooter kind of can make it a little quicker and just better for recovery. And for your goals for this year? If you had a Vespa goal, what do you what do you want to achieve in 2021? Uh, you mean as far as racing, yeah. just under the Vespa team? Yeah. Uh, I mean, podium or win 70.3 Worlds and qualify to Kona and do really well there. The, that, those would it. be the two big goals. <laughs> <laughs> win 70.3 and then win Ironman World Championship. Those are those are pretty good. Well, games. I've been training for 10, 15 years really hard, so we have to have big goals. Or if not, it's not really e worth even it. Though you're, how old are you? 27. 27, you've been training for 15, 17 years. I like that. <laughs> so the two guys who probably are most instrumental in making this Vespa triathlon team happen, uh, Felipe and obviously Craig Alexander, the legend, if you were to say something to them, what would you tell them? Yeah, I mean, just uh, from the on the Vespa side, just great idea. I think to go into triathlon and have a triathlon team, I think the... Um, they're very aligned, their values, you know, of a, yes. a company like Vespa and Triathlon. And then to have Crowey, that's an awesome choice. He's been on both sides. You know, he's worked with a lot of sponsors, obviously, right. but he's been, uh, you know, one of the best athletes in the world. So I think it's really good to have a manager that has been on both sides like that and understands Love both it. sides. Hey, congrats on everything you've accomplished so far. You always step up on the biggest stages with the biggest lights. Congratulations on Vespa and best of luck tomorrow. Thank you very much. All right, Rudy Von Berg has been a guest again. My name is Bob Abbott. This is Challenge Miami. Hold on, everybody. We will be right back.